Indiana with a 10-point lead over Princeton at the half. The winner of that game will get the winner of UConn and UCF. Oh, what a tournament it has been, Pam Ward, along with Steph White. And uh, right now, we get ready for this game. And this UCF team, statistically the defensive, best defensive team in the country. They sure are. And UConn is a team who has found its rhythm on the offensive end of the floor, averaging over 81 points a game since Paige Beckers has returned from injury. And Paige Beckers looking more like Paige Beckers as well in that first round matchup against Mercer. Aggressive to the rim. Three field goals were two feet in the paint. That's what we're used to seeing. She's going to continue to get more confident and more comfortable as this tournament progresses. Meanwhile, UCF, what is really an historic season for them, both the American regular season and tournament champions. And in their victory over Florida, it was the seniors, the big three coming through. Yeah, these three are so experienced, and they have been in this environment before in their days of the American Athletic Conference playing at UConn. Each time they played, they closed the gap a little bit. So these three are battle-tested and ready for this challenge. Yeah, played them better than any other team in the American Conference in the seven years that they were together. Second year, the UConn is back in the Big East. And every ticket has been sold. The student section, we saw them lining up hours before the game to come in. And this place is ready. As we tip off just after 9 p.m. local time, Paige Beckers with the ball in her hands. Missed 19 games after having surgery on her left knee. Nelson Adota attacks the rim right away. Take a look at today's Capital One starting lineups for UCF. It is a very veteran-laden team, as Steph said. Mas Kaba is really their, kind of their heartbeat, the big-time energy player inside. Number five, she's got the ball right now. And she got stuffed. Laying it off, and the delivery. As you look at UConn's starting five, AZ Fudd missed time with a hurt foot. The super freshman is back in the lineup. Edwards, Nelson Adota, and Kristen Williams rounding out the starting five along with Paige Beckers, who was the national player of the year. Maysmith, Wooden, and Associated Press last year. Battles, who is their leading scorer, number three in black, giving it up to Sanders. And uh, one of the tri captains attacks the rim. And it's a good sign for UCF that Tay Sanders has been aggressive to the rim early. She has struggled the last five games from the floor. Coach Abe said, I want her to focus on defense, but I like how aggressive she's been to the rim. And there is Coach Abe, Katie Abrahamson Henderson, in her sixth year in charge at UCF. She was the coach of the year in the American Conference. And she, coming into this building, they're very familiar. And says there's only two UConn players left on this team from the last time they played them two years ago. They're going to get Kaba with the offensive foul. Kaba is subbed out. Brittany Smith coming in. Edwards with the miss. I think Aaliyah Edwards missed an opportunity to get a layup right there. Could have stepped in. UConn doing a really good job of breaking this pressure and getting open looks. Good job by Nelson Adota to go down and Break up the fast break. UCF, a team that likes to play at a slower pace than UConn offensively. Mertens, the Clemson transfer. Good defense by Fudd. Beckers, too much space. UCF lucky she didn't bury that one.
Good front down there by AZ Fudd, not allowing Brittany Smith to get easy position in transition. And then she stuck her hand in and stole the ball. Beckers. Works it in. Each game, Paige Beckers gets more and more aggressive to the rim, and that shows how comfortable she is feeling getting back in a rhythm, coming back from injury. And it was that left knee that needed surgery. Here's Edwards. She can pick it up. She does. Fudd waits for it. And Leah Edwards, good work early in this game, but no reward. And usually Fudd is money from that spot. She sure is. Not used to seeing her miss an open look from three. The best three-point shooter, 45% on the season from distance for Fudd. And there's a foul. Kristen Williams got too much of battles. Well, Paige Becker's in transition, aggressive to the rim. Nobody stops the ball, and she just attacks. And you see the little one-two, a little bit of an angle. Uh, again, Pam, I think we have seen Paige Becker's in terms of feeling comfortable attacking the rim, much more confident early in this NCAA tournament than we saw in the Big East tournament. Diamond battles at the free throw line, and Coach Oriema admitted that Paige was not herself in that Big East tournament, a tournament that UConn won, avenging their only loss in the conference season by beating Villanova by 30 in the final. Battles delivers at the line. And now some of that patented pressure for the Knights. Beckers left open. Bud kept it going. But right by Thomas. Edwards active on the glass. Ali Edwards is just relentless. She is relentless on the glass. She does such a good job of making hustle plays. Now on Brittany Smith. Picks up her first. Gino Oriema. 11 NCAA titles trying to get back to their 28th straight Sweet 16. UCF trying to get their second NCAA win ever. The box diamond battles inside. Another whistle away from the action. Nelson Adota and Kaba tied up. They got Olivia for her first foul. First team all Big East performer this year. And that was another grab by Edwards right in front of the UConn bench. That was number one on the Canadian. UConn down two. Lewis is one of their better shooters from the outside, has the ball in her hands. Battles picks up a dribble. Kaba, she's gonna go. Good defense by Nelson Adota, and it goes back to the Huskies. UCF has gone without a field goal now for over three minutes. Meanwhile, UConn is a very uncharacteristic two of ten from the floor. Well, it's going to be interesting to see, Pam. UConn doing a really good job of breaking this pressure. But the other thing that UCF does is they speed you up in the half court. So taking a lot of quick shots. When those go in, it's all good. When they don't, it's a struggle. Right. And, and, and for the Knights, they have to finish plays. When they get UConn to take those quick shots and miss them, they've got to finish plays with box outs. Turnover gives it back to UConn. UCF with three turnovers. They only had six turnovers in their entire game against Florida. No player had more than one. Six different players with one turnover. Here's Battles. Five. This little crossover. Nelson Nadota cut off at the pass. That's tipped, so not a backcourt violation. Bud 
still cold. UCF being aggressive, they will have the basketball when we come back. UCF up two on the Huskies. And yes, beating Florida against whom they were 0-26 all time was their first NCAA tournament win. What a season it has been for the American Conference Coach of the Year. Yeah, it sure has. And you, you look at these numbers right here. Diamond Battles has been the leader for this team. Six games with 20 points, had zero in her previous seasons, has improved, gotten in the gym, done the work. Masakaba, the first recruit, Katie Abrahams and Henderson got to come to UCF. And Tay Sanders, the quiet leader by example. Those three have been solid and instrumental in the rise of this program. And now trying to take down mighty UConn for the first time against whom they're 0-13 all time. And this is a kid who's not afraid of anybody. No, she's not. And that's one thing Coach Abe said. Moss isn't going to be scared. Diamond Battles isn't going to be scared. Shania, we've been here before. We've been in this environment. Kristen Williams kicking it out to Fudd. Boy, UConn uncharacteristically ice cold from the floor. Lewis, that's the one player uh, Coach Oriema was telling his team during shoot around to find out on the perimeter. Now, Lish Lewis was 0 for 4 from the three point line in the first round matchup against Florida. She was due. Now a hold on Thomas. Well, this is a UCF team. Want to get the ball inside to Masani Kaba. Let her go to work. She does just that. And Lish Lewis in transition, knocking down the three. That's what she does, Pam. And pardon me, that foul, this is a big development, was on was on Kaba. So two fouls now on Masani Kaba, who Masani is uh, so valuable to this team. Bud. I want to welcome those of you who just saw Tennessee squeak by Belmont 70 to 67 to get into the Sweet 16. Where they will be heading to Wichita. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you from Stores. This is a Bridgeport region second round game, and yet your eyes do not deceive you. Connecticut is losing 11 to 7 to UCF. A team that has never beaten the Huskies. UConn shooting just 23% from the floor so far in this game. Another offensive board, though, for Nelson Adota. Westbrook with the miss. And Pam, this is just it. You can see UConn's playing at a faster pace than they're used to, to playing at. A little bit rushed in the half court. So UCF getting what they want. But when you give UConn multiple opportunities, they will make you pay. Yes, they've had the misses, but you're right. Those offensive rebounds are going to come back to bite the Knights. Paige Beckers with the bucket gets him to within two. UCF beat Florida on Saturday. UConn beat Mercer. Handily, the SoCon champs going down, 83-38. Battles, the leading scorer for the Knights. Fouled and hit a three. Pam, I love the intensity the Diamond Battles plays with. We talked about her being fearless right here. The step back, that's what she does. Avina Westbrook fouling the three-point shooter. Got to let her come down. You can't come into her. And you see that intensity for Diamond Battles. I loved when they won the regular season championship and went into the postseason conference tournament. She said, we're not satisfied. It's not enough for us to just get one. And then Nelson Adoto just committed a foul. Her second. The winner of this game will play the winner of Indiana Princeton. That game is close. Uh, Saturday, the Sweet 16 in Bridgeport. So Thomas goes to the free throw line now for UCF. You know, Oriana would break a tie with Tennessee going to its 28th straight Sweet 16. UCF has never been there. In fact, they had never won an NCAA game until Saturday. 
And nobody's letting go of the basketball. And Paige Beckers tells the students to get into it. Now that, that is Tay Sanders. Pam, it's so loud in here. I don't know how you can hear the whistles, but at the same time, when the official comes in, somebody's got to let it go, and you're going to see Paige Beckers enticing the, the student section to get a little louder. And they are all standing up. And Tay Sanders, one of the tri-captains on this team. And these teams have... Gone nose to nose. Yes, UConn has won every game by a good average, but that seven-point deficit in 2020 was the closest that any American team got to UConn in the entire time they were in the American Conference. That's seven seasons. And Coach Abrahamson Henderson, as the bucket. Here's Fudd. Good answer. Well, AZ Fudd starting to settle in offensively. Has knocked down her last two threes, getting a little more time. But Coach Abe told, told us that she thinks that playing here certainly is an advantage, that UCF has played here during their time in the American. They're used to this kind of atmosphere. And especially it's an experienced UCF team. You see AZ Fudd knocking down the three. This is an experienced group. They've been in this environment before. They understand how to handle it. Malia Edwards has just picked up her second foul. Now Brittany Smith heads to the free throw line. Smith was brilliant against Florida on Saturday. A career high 26 points in 25 minutes. Only missed four of her 15 shots. Yeah, she was incredible. Such a leaper, able to elevate over defenders. You see her numbers right there. She was has been incredible for UCF all season long. She's the sixth player of the year in the American, American Conference this year. Good ball movement, but unable to get it home was Juhas. So Pam, you can just feel how rushed UConn is on the offensive end of the floor right now, and that's what this UCF defense does to you. And Gino Ariama talked to his team about this today. The key for us is going to be composure. We have to be composed with the basketball on the offensive end. And he said, otherwise you will play right into their hands. And so far in the first quarter, that's what's happening. Sanders got tied up with Beckers again. UConn basketball. Shot clock turned off. UConn team that has won 11 straight since losing to Villanova. First conference loss in 145 games. Westbrook. Quickly getting it out of the trap. Bud. Got it underneath. Dushan, though. Short armed it. You can just see how quickly UCF recovers. You think that they're beat on a drive, on a pass, on a rotation, and they are relentless in their effort. This is a terrific defense. Now let's see what their offense can do in the waning seconds. Battles. Got to get it up. Does. Short. What a first quarter. UCF up 18 to 12 after one. For the Knights, they great celebrations. They took the pom-poms away. <laughs> from Started the, dancing. Yeah, I they, love it. Yeah, as well they should. And they are up six. And that was their first NCAA tournament win. 125 behind the Utah. <laughs> That's an incredible number. Wow. I mean, 126. To one. And all of them, Gino Oriema's victories, the most wins by any coach in the NCAA tournament. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you from Stores. UConn shooting just 26% so far in this game and doing exactly what Coach Oriema was concerned about. 
and that is playing at UCF's pace. Yes, he said to his team, we have to maintain our poise and composure. And we, don't, we don't want to feed into what they do well and how they get their energy. Turnover gets it back to the Huskies. This is the first time since they went to the quarter system in 2016 that UConn has trailed at home after the first quarter. That's an incredible stat. Westbrook trying to get it inside. And a foul out on the perimeter. It is on Diamond Battles. Both the player of the year and the defensive player of the year in the American Conference this season. Inside and a foul as Juhas took it to the basket. Oriyama with three reserves joining Fudd and Beckers on the floor now. That's the second foul on Brittany Smith. And the first free throws for UConn. Juhas just 60% on the season. Had a good game against Mercer, a double-double. 10 points, 10 boards in just 17 minutes. First year at UConn after a couple of years at Ohio State, where she was a two-time first-team All-Big Ten in the, during her career. Knight slowing things down, taking some time off the shot clock. Oh, mismatch, got to get it to her. Oh. Got to get her the ball on that mismatch. You're not going to get very many opportunities when there's a switch right there. And you can see Gino Ariema talking to Dorka Yuha. She was not supposed to switch. It happened, and UCF not able to take advantage. And instead of travel, gives the ball back to the Huskies. Thomas over there, right in Fudd's face, but she'll pull it in a heartbeat. Back into the backcourt, but it was tipped by Lewis. Shot clock into single digits. Beckers, long three. She was fouled. That was really good recognition by Easy Fudd and Paige Beckers to get the ball back to the open Paige Beckers. Lewis could not get there in the recovery and fouls the three-point shooter. First one on Alicia Lewis, the hand for AZ Fudd, who has a couple of threes tonight. Beckers' first trip to the line. Her seventh game back after having surgery on December 13th. Tibia plateau fracture and a torn meniscus in her left knee. And she was just dribbling the ball up the court. <laughs> yeah, non-contact. That's a tough thing to watch, too, when you see that. <laughs> but Paige Beckers stayed on track in her recovery. Gina Oriema said, we're going to let her lead and tell us when she's ready to come back. And and she did. Page just one of three in that trip at the free throw line. Came back February the 25th in a game against St. John's. It was a game before that when they played Marquette. And she went through her first full shoot around. And then she said, I want to go on against St. John's. And Lewis gagging around in the backcourt, didn't get it over in time. And we saw them in shoot around today working on that. And Coach Abe saying, we have to get the ball across half court. You've got to continue to move it forward. Just lack of awareness right there of the time in the backcourt. And it's six turnovers for UCF, as many as they had in their entire game against Florida on Saturday. Westbrook, a little bit too strong. Lewis hunts it down. 
And then the trap. Pava, chancy pass. Mule to Dushan, who missed it. Wow. Mika Mule, the defensive player of the year in the American, coming up with the steal, but Dushan could not get it to go home. And you can see Katie Abrahamson Henderson telling her team to slow down. We've got to execute in the quarter court. They have turned the ball over on all four possessions in this quarter so far. This is possession number five. Thomas couldn't handle it, but it fell right into the hands of Kaba. Uh, I think a next time out, they're going to talk about the mismatch inside. There have been a couple of possessions where Masini Kaba has had a perimeter player on her inside. You've got to find a way to get her a touch when that happens. Another foul. This one called on Destiny Thomas. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you. It is a sold-out building. There's about 5,000 crazy students to our right. And uh, so far, UCF winning, winning this ball game. And I love the intensity of this ball game early. UCF is fearless. They are not afraid of this atmosphere. They are not afraid of this UConn team. They've been here before, and they're doing what they do best on the defensive end of the floor. UCF. Has never beaten UConn. Muha's back at the free throw line. Coach Abe, Katie Abrahamson Henderson, told us at shoot around today that she thought her team was up to the challenge, having played here in the American. Muha's goes to the bench after some good minutes and now some pressure from the Huskies. Winner moves on to the Sweet 16 in Bridgeport. Indiana and Princeton are one point ball game right now. The winner of that game will get the winner of this one. Battles the leading scorer for the Knights. A little bit too strong. Great hustle play and another tie up. That's Tay Sanders. She's been in the middle of all of them. <laughs> she sure has. And Coach Abe said, you know, Tay Sanders has struggled from the floor of the last five games. We saw her aggressive early in the first quarter to the rim, but she said, I need Tay to do what Tay does best, play defense, give us energy, be consistent. Possession arrow gives it to UConn, and we had a, one particular contentious tie-up earlier between Sanders and Beckers. Both benches were warm that any further escalation during tie-ups and held balls would lead to a technical foul, so the... Both sides have been warned as a, another foul. Mila Luma in the game. Only played 47 seconds on Friday, but in there necessitated by some foul trouble uh, with UCF right now. Yeah, after that warning, the game's been called a little bit tighter since then. I like the chippiness. I like the competitive atmosphere that we have here tonight. NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by Capital One continues. A Sweet 16 this weekend, followed by the Elite Eight. And the Final Four, beautiful Minneapolis championship game Sunday, April 3rd, 8 Eastern on ESPN. And with so many upsets, so much unpredictability, who knows who will be in Minneapolis? And that is no question about that. And you mentioned the one-point game, Princeton and Indiana. Another double-digit seed. Looking to get to the Sweet 16. We've never had three in the same season. We're already guaranteed two with Creighton and South Dakota. Williams, two on two. He's going right at Lewis and drew the foul. I don't think Coach Abe agreed with that. No, I think not thrilled with that call. That's two now on Lewis. Sends Williams to the line. And Coach Abe is not one to hide her feelings or emotions. The ball player played at Georgia for Andy Landers yeah. and Iowa for, for Vivian, Vivian Stringer. Can you imagine playing for both Andy Landers and Vivian Stringer? Incredible. 
And, and this team has her feisty personality. Yes. Plays the same defense, they don't switch, they just do what they do, and they do it very, very well. It certainly makes it easier from a scout perspective. We do what we do, day in and day out. Kaba stuffed by Nelson Adota. Got it back. And that is now three fouls on Kaba. And Nelson Adota, really good job of meeting Masani Kaba at the top. And then the offensive foul on the second attempt. You see her come through, and Nelson Adota selling it. Sold it. Big time. That's three fouls on Kaba, which is huge for the Knights. Not a very deep team, and Kaba so crucial. Masani Kaba, two for Brittany Smith, who was a really great source of offense in that first round matchup against Florida. Career high 26. All right, being beat up by Lewis. Mule, good look and just. That shot actually didn't even count. It was a three second violation before the shot went off. I love that it's so loud in here. We can't even hear the whistle. No idea what's happening. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Pressure. Thomas bringing it over half court. UCF with just two points in the first five minutes of this quarter. Americans getting it over to Battles. Without size on the floor for UCF, UConn able to switch all of these on-ball screens and there's no mismatch. Battles challenging Nelson Adoto. This is the shot clock expired. And since it didn't hit the rim, the ball goes over to the Huskies. Love what we're seeing right here, Pam. It's a little chippy here in stores. Both of these teams battling. Welcome back to stores. Yes, it is a low scoring game. Connecticut down by one, outscoring UCF 7-2 to so far in this quarter. UConn has not hit a field goal, and UCF two points and six turnovers just in this quarter, as many turnovers as they had their entire game against Florida on Saturday. Well, it certainly has been a frenetic pace, but not in the way that we're used to with teams getting up and down the floor. It is in the quarter court. This UCF defense getting after it. But foul trouble is a problem right now for them. Certainly for UCF, Kaba, especially with three personals, is sort of their major cog when it comes to feistiness. A dog, as Coach Abe calls her. Biggest compliment, right? Yes, yes so. absolutely. Shot clock dying. Mule. Mika Mule. Bounces UConn back on top. It is an eight nothing run. The big question for the Knights all season really has been avoiding scoring droughts and they're in a big one right now. And they're not gonna get a, a shot off. Oh boy, Nika Mule just bailed him out big time with the foul. So the defensive player of the year in the Big East wants this one back. But this is good work on the offensive end. Good patience, good poise offensively, forcing UCF to play defense that entire shot clock, and Nika Mule knocking down the three. But then the foul with one second maybe left on the shot clock gives UCF another 20 seconds. Americans guarded by Fudd. Sanders, they need a shot. Merton's not a big offensive threat, well short. <laughs> 10, 
turnovers total now for the Knights. Paige Becker's not on the floor for UConn at the moment. Mijas can't get it to go, trying to take advantage of that big height advantage. Battles working against Mule. Great That's good D. Yep, great defense against a terrific offensive player. Roy Sanders just throwing it up there and got fouled by Mule. We saw UCF working on that weave action today. Nika Mule played that almost as well as you can till the end, bailed out Tay Sanders. That's a couple times now deep in the shot clock that Mule has had fouls. Those six assists that Sanders had on Florida in the first round, a new career high for the super senior. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Thursday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on CBS and TBS. For more information, go to NCAA.com. No, oh, she missed them both. Normally a 73% free throw shooter. UCF stuck on two points in this quarter. And an offensive foul on Juhas. That was the first on her third team foul. Right now, a lot of pressure on Diamond Battles on the offensive end of the floor. No Brittany Smith on the bench with two fouls. No Masini Kaba on the bench with three fouls. Where can UCF find some more offense? It's going to be up to Battles. Needs to, needs to shoot. Does. Got it. She's been doing that all year long, Pam. End of shot clock shots. She's making plays. She was telling Destiny Thomas, roll, roll. They're switching. That is something that UCF's going to have to talk about in the break. Nice play by Williams to get some open space. So smooth. Destiny Williams, that shot fake pull up. She makes it look really easy. Left open, one of the few open looks. But Luma misses. And if you're Connecticut, that's who you want taking that shot. Yep. Only 37% from the floor for the season. A point a game for Luma, but Battles coming up big with the shot clock dying. Yeah, Diamond Battles, we've seen this all season long from her. Shot clock winding down. She finds a way to get the shot up and in. And Kristen Williams, such a good three-point shooter. So you close out on her and terrific in the mid-range. Luma just picked up her second foul for the Knights. Nelson Adota. First team all Big East this season. It's a both. The lead is three. Biggest of the game for the Huskies. Sanders. Wow, Williams came over and got the block. Beckers. Fudd. Kristen Williams continuing to be in the thick of things. And they say it's UCF basketball. What a play by Kristen Williams. Just when you think you got an easy layup, terrific rotation, elevation, saves an easy two. 5'11", senior from Little Rock. And now UCF can all but kill 
in second quarter. Battles working on Beckers who blocked it. So we expected a defensive game, and we've gotten one so far. Just five points for UCF. Time for the degree halftime report. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. It has indeed been madness inside this building as UConn leads 26-23. That is one good looking dog, Steph White. Sure is. Up on the Sweet 16. Let's take a look at our story of the score. It was, it was the Knights in the first quarter outscoring UConn for the first time at home since they went to the quarter systems. But in the second quarter, it was 14 to 5. UCF not helping themselves with seven turnovers in that second quarter. And we've got ourselves quite a ball game with a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White. Let's check out our thrilling drives from this game brought to you by Nissan. Well, UCF's defense has been stifling, holding UConn to less than 27% from the floor. Did a really good job early in the basketball game of keeping them off balance, of forcing UConn to rush in the half court and securing the defensive board. Well, then UConn was able to get going a little bit, find a little bit of daylight. Paige Beckers with the mid-range pull-up. AZ Fudd had a couple of threes, including this one right here. And Kristen Williams in the mid-range. But UConn really did their damage in that second quarter at the foul line. Nine points from the foul line. No player on either team has scored more than two field goals, including Paige Beckers has, a, has five points. UCF has never been to the Sweet 16. They've never won an NCAA tournament game until Saturday when they took care of Florida. And 28 straight Sweet 16s would break a tie with a record held by Tennessee that they had when the tournament first started in 1982, going up until the early 2000s when they had that second round loss to Ball State that a lot of Tennessee fans will never forget. Well, no question about that. UCF really hindered by foul trouble early yeah. in the ball game. There are two posts, Brittany Smith and Masani Kava. Diamond Battles has carried them offensively all night long. He has 10 points. Yeah, Kava with three, Smith, Lewis, and Uma all with two personal fouls, and that's their height. It's their height. It's double-digit scoring. Brittany Smith in the ball game. Masani Kava not in the game. I think you got to give her some looks inside. The Knights, the champions of the American Conference, both regular season and the conference tournament. First time they have ever done that. Never beaten UConn. Thomas, nice look. Good start offensively for UCF that struggled in that second quarter. They only hit two field goals in the entire second quarter. They have two here in the first minute. Destiny Thomas didn't attempt a field goal in the game against Florida. Not one field goal. We've seen her take a couple here today, and they're going to need it from her. Boy, Nelson Adota and Thomas get tied up. And the foul is called on Thomas, her second. Can you imagine what that game was oh like? Oh, my gosh. So the winner of this game gets Indiana that barely squeaked by Princeton. Indiana. Their second straight trip to the Sweet 16. Princeton was trying to make it a third double-digit seed in the Sweet 16. That's right, Indiana got all the way to the Elite Eight last year. That's Bridgeport yes. region, which is yes. where we're playing here. They got NC State last year in the Sweet 16, upset them. This has been March Madness for real. Yeah. Unbelievable. Americans get the start, dribbled right into trouble and got fouled. Easy Fudd, her first. And that's one of those situations where you got to be careful about over-penetrating and trying to score over Nelson Adota. If you get a rotation, either keep that dribble alive or find the next pass. Got bailed out by that one, I felt like. I, I agree. Here's Meritons at the line. UCF, her fourth school. Freshman year at Stetson, then went to Northwest Florida State College and a couple of years at Clemson. And now the super senior at UCF. 
One out of two. They have not done themselves any favors at the free throw line. Five of 11. Nassinadota. Put your shoulders down, drives. Thomas, rebound. And that is a charge on Sanders. That was just a great job by Leah Edwards of reading this play. Coming in from the handoff, you know the on-ball screen is coming. Getting out in position, and Tay Sanders has to read that and adjust. Drive it right down the middle of the lane, but a perfect position and offensive foul drawn from Leah Edwards. The emotion from Edwards, who has not scored in this game. Sold out Gamble Pavilion, and they are loud. Beckers can't give her that much room. Now that's too easy in the top. What UCF typically does is pass off on that on-ball screen. Nobody read the on-ball screen. You got to read it defensively. Coach Beckers takes advantage. Tied up. Sanders guarded by Fudd. Now on the switch, she's got Edwards on her. Tried to get it inside. The UConn has been just suffocating in the paint. Yeah, they really have. And Lydia Nelson and Dota has done a terrific job of not allowing Brittany Smith. And here's Paige Beckers off of the on-ball screen. See, Merton's over here worried about Kristen Williams. Doesn't get to the rotation, and Paige Beckers has an open look. I would be worried about Paige Beckers all the time. All the time. You certainly do. You have to force the next pass and then depend on your teammate to rotate. Smith gets her own miss. Ball goes to the Huskies. Brittany Smith was 11 of 15 from the floor in that first round matchup against Florida. She struggled. She's been saddled with foul trouble early in this ball game. Hasn't gotten a clean look. Yeah, coming off a of career high 26. Williams streaking to the basket, got fouled. Gina Cross, Katie Lukonich, and Benny Luna, our officials tonight, they have been busy. That is three fouls now on Thomas. A couple of quick ones here in the third quarter. And Williams heads to the free throw line. The UConn team that Coach Oriema said this has been his most challenging season. Most frustrating season with so many injuries, so many players in and out of the lineup. 11 different starting lineups. Eight players have missed at least two games with either illness or injury. And for the first time in a long time, this is a UConn team that was worrying about their next opponent. How do we beat our next opponent for a lot of this season? Not worrying about what we do and how do we build our chemistry. Now that they're healthy, they've got the bodies. You can tell they've been working on building that chemistry. Another miss for Smith. And the third foul has just been called on Brittany Smith. That is huge for the Knights. He's the third night in foul trouble. Or not big, deep foul trouble with three fouls, I should say. Masani Kaba back in the game with three fouls. It'll be interesting to see what UCF does as an adjustment defensively. Beckers could get so much on passes. Good play by Lewis. Two on one. Battles into Williams. He's called. But the trail official, Benny Luna, has made a call in the backcourt. And it is so loud in here. Now he is getting together with his crew.
You're not sure exactly what they're looking at. We will have it all cleared up when we come back. What a game in stores. The previous play is under review for a potential intentional foul. Welcome back to Storrs. UConn with a one-point lead over UCF. The officials went over to look at the monitor. There was a play. On black three, the clock will be adjusted to 546, and we will now go to media timeout. We already went to media, so we're good. Okay. We're going to see the steal and right there, the contact in the backcourt. That is what they were going to review. No one heard a whistle as they continued in the play. And the trail official was making a call. It was so loud that no one could hear. So went to the monitor to see when the call was made. You can see there's clearly a foul right here. I think the question was, when was the call made? So it has been called a personal foul on Diamond Battles. And it was not upgraded. So an offensive foul on Battles. 14th time these two teams have met. And uh, UConn has won all of them. But you see UConn won by only seven points back in January of 2020. Last year, they were in the American Conference, and that is as close as any American Conference team got to them. I think when you're in the huddle right now, if you're Katie Abrahamson Henderson, you've got to talk to your team about, look, I love the intensity. I love how hard we're playing, how competitive we're playing, but we have to stay composed. We've seen it get a little chippy. We've seen them get in foul trouble. We've got to stay composed. And Diamond Battles is the player of the year in the American Conference. Here's some of her evening. Well, this is what she's done all season long, and she came to UCF, not a very good three-point shooter, has developed that throughout her career, really good in the mid-range. She has been the sole source of offense for the night so far here tonight. Yeah, her first two years, 0 for 5 from 3, 7 of 26 in her junior year, then really got into the gym, and uh, Coach Abe said that she was sort of a uh, almost embarrassed by her, her lack of an outside game and really worked and now has 39 threes coming into tonight, has a two tonight. And there you see up to 41 after not making a single one in the first couple of years. But, uh, well, she got in the gym. You know, it's, it's no secret. She got in the gym with associate head coach Tony Valerio and she went to work. They had a schedule every single day. She worked on her game, and there's no secret sauce, right? It's just good hard work. And she also had to leave last year. They got into the NCAA tournament. She got hurt in the first half of the game, was unable to complete it. So her whole offseason fueled. She got hurt. She knew she needed to work on her game. And uh, she's had a great year so far, but right now UCF really struggling to get any offense going in this game. Yeah, they are, and that's been a problem for UCF all season long. I mean, they are such a good defensive team. They have been up and down on the offensive end of the floor, and you couple that with the fact that Masani Kaba and Brittany Smith both in foul trouble. Those are two double-figure scorers, so a lot of the load has fallen on Diamond Battles' hand shoulders. Battles is the only player on either team in double figures. She has 10. And UCF has had eight shots blocked. 40% of the shots they put up tonight have been blocked by Huskies. Eight of the 20. It's been that kind of a night. But Battles, another one of those dogs that Coach Abe talks about. And this is one of the greatest atmospheres I've ever been in as far as intensity and noise and UCF's hanging in there. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, you look at the score, it's 29 to 28 in the third quarter, and typically you think, but no, the energy has been terrific. The atmosphere has been terrific. And if you're UCF, you have to bring the intensity, bring that competitiveness, but dial back to get a little bit more poise and composure. The winner gets Indiana in the Bridgeport region. Sweet 16 and an offensive foul. That's the third on Nelson Adota. Well, Masani Kaba playing with those three fouls. Again, does a good job of selling. I think right now it's been so chippy 
Both teams are going to sell it a little bit. Yep. Smith, nice little turnaround yep. and finally got something to go. They got to keep giving her the ball. They've got to put some pressure on this UConn defense on the interior. She has the ability to elevate. And she has that turnaround jumper, and they were talking about that, the UConn coaches during shoot around today saying look out for that turnaround Jay and she just hit him hit him with it well you said it Pam in the last matchup against Flores she's a high jumper yeah she can elevate over defenders Davy Abrahamson Henderson have been, has been telling her to just calm down slow down take your shot but AZ Fall it has the answer UConn bounces back on top Kaba recovered. Taken away by Beckers. Going all the way, left it short. It is. UCF ball. Poison composure, talk about it right there. AZ Fudd, hands ready, feet ready. Nothing but the bottom of the net. NCAA tournament. Yep, taking out Ole Miss in the first round. Congratulations, Dawn puts the white. And her Coyotes are going to the Sweet 16. Pam, we've almost had to change the best things multiple times. Belmont almost got Tennessee. Princeton almost got Indiana. Are you kidding me? What a tournament it has been. We expected it would be wide open, but I didn't think this many things would happen the first weekend. What a tournament it has been. And here you see UConn only up by two against UCF, Central Florida, the Knights from the American Conference in Orlando. Oh, back door. Oh! They missed it. Oh, they had it. They were working on this today in practice. And Nikisha Sales told all of the guards every time, don't stop your backdoor cut. It was there. Diamond battle stopped. 14th turnover for the Knights. They are out rebounding UConn. Juhas back in the game. Fudd, short, chased it down. And the ball stays with the Huskies. Easy Fudd, such a tremendous talent, the true freshman from Arlington, Virginia. Four games and hurt her foot against South Carolina. There's Edwards' first points of the night. Four point advantage, largest of the game. And then another throw away. Yeah, the timing just off right now for UCF on the offensive end of the floor. Really good defense by UConn. UCF with 18 points in the first quarter, 12 since. Edwards trying to get it in. It has to back away. Oh, nice play by Alicia Lewis. I'd like to see Lewis be a little bit more aggressive offensively. She's a three-point shooter. She's not going down here today. She is primarily a facilitator, but she can knock it down. She's only taken one shot. It was a three, and she hit it. Thomas, short. Smith couldn't corral it. Pressure from the Knights. Beckers finds Fudd. Beckers with just seven points tonight. On battling inside. And another whistle. Edwards being held. Smith has just picked up her fourth. Brittany Smith. 
coming off that career high 26 against Florida, saddled with foul trouble all evening. So Destiny Thomas comes in for her. Thomas has three personals. Leah Edwards had a really good Big East tournament. Sixth player of the year last year and was a little cranky that she didn't make the any of the all Big East teams during the regular season kind of fueled her in the tournament. That according to Gina Oriama. Yes. <laughs> according, according to Big Man. Very talented sophomore. Going to work on extending her offensive range next year. UConn's biggest lead now stands here at six points. And, and their advantage has been at the foul line. And UCF has been in foul trouble all night long, and UConn has been able to take advantage. Sanders right into Juhas. Got her own rebound. Shot clock did not reset. Lewis. Her second three, a little bit too strong. Thomas good old board, and she was fouled by Westbrook. And right now, UCF is rushed offensively. They're getting a switch and getting a mismatch that they're not seeing. And over-penetrating, trying to shoot over the top. Adorka Juhas, Olivia Nelson Adota when she's in there, and that is not the option. UConn's been blocking shots left and right tonight. And UCF has dared to go inside. A minute and a half left to go. In the third. Battles. Juhas <laughs> posting up strongly. Good block by Thomas. Chancey, she has three fouls. Kaba kicks it out, and a travel. Gosh, Sanders was indecisive about whether to shoot or not and shuffled her feet. Yeah, the turnovers really killing UCF. When you already struggle to score the basketball, you cannot afford to give your opponent multiple possessions. Then Fudd forced into the giveaway. Masami Kava has Avina Westbrook on her. She oh. has to get a touch. They are not recognizing those mismatches. There's the fourth on Thomas. I mean, again, great job by Aaliyah Edwards. It's an obvious foul, terrific position. Does a good job of staying in front. Thirty-second timeout called by UCF as they have fallen behind here by six. And you see Smith, Thomas, and Kaba in serious foul trouble with still a quarter left to go. Let's take a look now at how UCF is achieving the impossible. Brought to you by Adidas. They were 0-26 against Florida. They had never won an NCAA game, and they were able to do it on Saturday. Can they pull it off tonight? Much taller task. It, it certainly is. They're giving themselves an opportunity because of what they're doing on the defensive end of the floor, but they're hurting themselves offensively by not playing with poise, not playing with composure, not taking care of the basketball and reading what the defense is giving them. They have missed eight of their last nine shots. This is a 7 nothing UConn win. A UConn run, pardon me. UCF trying to get its first ever win against the Huskies. Kristen Williams has been really aggressive. She has. And she picks and chooses her moments. She's able to do that now that you have Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd back on the floor. She's able to pick and choose when to attack, when to take her shot. 
Final seconds of the third. Lewis got it knocked away, and then a tie-up. Possession arrow points to UConn. The Knights have scored only 12 points in the last two quarters. Indiana waits in the Sweet 16. Eleven times, though, Gina Oriema is still the gold standard. And left side of your screen, that's Brianna Stewart in her fourth and final championship. They've not won one since. 2016, which here, this part of the country is like the apocalypse. <laughs> but this is your game summary, yeah. as you might expect in the 38-30 game, the offense is a little skinny. Yeah, it sure is. And you know, UConn has forced 18 turnovers for UCF. Look, we know this is what UCF does. They keep it low scoring. They are a tremendous defensive team. And Gino Oriama talked to us about this. He said, look, if they could score consistently, Nobody would ever be able to beat them. Yeah. He has so much respect for this team, this program, and what they do. And they said they play their butts off. Kind of reminds them a little bit of the old Rutgers teams that would play kind of ugly on defense. Keep yeah. the score low. They force you out of your comfort zone with that defense. Aggressive. Relentless. Relentless, yes. And the players all buy into it, but... Major foul trouble with some of their key components, especially. Now Smith and Thomas with four personals. Shot clock at three. Edwards has to shoot. Passed it. Fudd. What an option. Mm This is a great extra pass. Really good poise and composure by Aaliyah Edwards. Finding AZ Fudd. And AZ Fudd's expression never changes, Pam. I mean, speaking of poise and composure, her expression never yeah. changes, her body language never changes. And especially for a true freshman, they called a foul on Aaliyah Edwards of UConn after the basket by Fudd, who Coach Oyama says has the best footwork on a jumper that he's ever seen. He's coaching pretty good shooters. A little bit. It's a 12-0 run. UCF's offense has gone silent, shooting under 23% since the first quarter. You know, we were talking about it off air in the quarter break, that it was dangerous on time. You gotta find another gear if you're UCF. Continue to fight defensively, and UConn continuing to stay poised, stay patient on the offensive end. Now another foul on Aaliyah Edwards. Two quick ones. That is now four on the sophomore from Kingston, Ontario. Canadian Olympian goes to the bench. Purple and gold braids in honor of her late brother, Jermaine. Big influence in her basketball career. Now she's sitting. It's been over seven minutes since the Knights have hit a field goal. Finally. And it's Sanders. Good pass. Whistle before the shot. Nice pass from Juhas into the post. Tay Sanders had two early buckets for the Knights. They're playing off of her hand down. She's going to shoot that thing. Three now on Neil Aluma, the grad transfer from George Washington University in Washington, D.C., getting playing time because of foul trouble to starters. Oh, Kristen Rayo!
Picking moments, Pam. Kristen Williams on the ball reversal, knocks it down. Joins AZ Fudd in double figures. She's a senior, she understands this moment. You've been asking about Lewis. I, I don't know why Lewis doesn't take more shots. I mean, she is a really good three-point shooter. That's what she did at Syracuse. That's what they did as a program. Matt Lewis played her freshman year there. Transferred to UCF. She was a co-six player of the year in the league last year. Sanders guarded by Westbrook. Took her to the hole, but couldn't get it in. Westbrook runs into Lewis, who's called for the blocking foul. Well, this is good patience offensively by UConn. Kristen Williams all alone over there, and she knew it. And look at the emotion from the bench. Paige Beckers cheering her on, but look at Kristen Williams. She gets it. She understands the moment. She understands the urgency, and she stepped up and knocked it down. Has been feeding off the emotion of this sold out crowd, the student section to our right in one of the end zones. They have not sat down the entire night. It is a terrific atmosphere. There you take a look at them. We came here early and they beat us to it. They were <laughs> lined up. They well were in line and we left shoot around. That's right. to get to a Sweet 16 matchup in Bridgeport next weekend against Indiana, who barely survived Princeton tonight. Lewis almost. Becker's on the run. Uh, moving well through the foul. That's four on Lewis. Well, UConn playing with this small lineup, they can really spread the floor, and that's going to force quick rotations. And Lewis that time trying to get back into the play. Couldn't get there quick enough. Yep, Edwards and Juhas on the bench. UConn's 28th straight Sweet 16 berth on the line, which would break a tie with Tennessee. UCF going for its first trip and would be literally doubling their all-time wins in the NCAA tournament. They got win number one in the first round against Florida. Plus nine in scoring from the free throw line for UConn. A good pass into Kaba. And she was fouled by Nelson Agoda, who ha now has four personals. And Masani Kaba, senior from Dorchester, Massachusetts, heads to the line. The first signee ever for Coach Abe, who recruited her when she was still at the University of Albany. And when she got the job down in sunny Florida, Masini's <laughs> ears per per perked up a little bit, and she signed with her. She said she's like the grandma of the team. Takes care of everybody, is that leader. Coach Abe said she called her the second day on the job. I don't know what took her so long. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> she's had a difficult night, as had most of the nights. Shot clock, dying, Nelson Adota. Ball goes over to the Knights, just under five and a half to go, down 10. Alina Westbrook starting Brittany Smith. I'd like to see her get a touch on the on the post. Yeah, big, big. Here we go, right there. Oh, you oh. got to get it up, though. 
Got to get it up. Yeah, not even close to connecting. Turnovers mountain. 20 for UCF. 20th in the nation and turnovers forced. But it's been the other way around the night. Nothing but net. Page buckets. UConn up a dozen. Biggest lead of the night. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. Lazy Fun has four of UConn's six threes, and she's hit some big ones when they've needed it most. Stretching the defense, ball gets reversed around this zone. She knocks down dagger after dagger with poise and composure. That one at the buzzer was the most impressive. Lazy Fun, the true freshman from right outside of Washington, D.C., both of her parents were basketball players, did not play for two entire months. Since the injury, she's had three 20-point games, and boy, has hit those Pam, big threes. I played against her mom, Katie Smirkaduffy. We she played against her in, in AAU basketball, and she was fiery, competitive, edgy. Yeah, show her emotions more so than, than <laughs> Andy, right? Yes, yes, a heck of a competitor. And played at NC State and then George Mason in Fairfax, Virginia. Actually called some of her mother's games at George Mason. <laughs> We're not old. We're, we're seasoned. Oh, you can see that competitiveness right there. <laughs> Coaching her AAU club as well, her, both of her parents, but I mean, her mom was a heck of a ball player. Yeah, it's Katie Smith Duffy. Tim Pug, the dad, also a basketball player. Smith, easiest look. Or not easy, most open look. Nice most look open look, Nothing's yes. easy. Brittany Smith, the senior from Orlando, sixth player of the year in the American Conference this year. She's not decided whether or not she will come back next season. She wants to be a nurse. And making that decision, AZ. They're not going to guard her out there. Sanders, big. Mm -hmm. He called for her to shoot. She only took, she only hit one field goal in Saturday's game. Yeah, she had struggled from the floor the last five games. Did have a career high in assists against Florida, but now she's into double figures, and it's a seven-point ball game as we have a timeout. Well, look at Brittany Smith draws all the defense. Tay Sanders steps up. That's your senior knocking it down. UCF scratching their way back into this game. First time they've hit double digits in scoring since the first quarter when they had 18. And UConn trying to break that deadlock with Tennessee. The great Pat Summit. First NCAA tournament back in 1982 until 2008 was that string. And the winner does indeed get Indiana in Bridgeport. Beckers blocked by Kaba. Kaba receives it, kicks it out. Smith got it. Now here's the Brittany Smith we saw on Saturday when she had a career high 26 points. And the lead is down to five. Seven nothing night run. And there's the stifling defense. They were just able to escape. Might maybe a travel in there? I don't. I don't. I, I, that was a travel. No shot. Offensive foul on UConn's Nelson Adota, and that is her fifth. We've seen the battle on the interior all night long. Nearly every post player in foul trouble. Masani Kaba inside trying to get position and again sold it. Five points for Nelson Adota. 
They have Edwards who can sub in. Yes, you have to give Brittany Smith the ball. He's been hot. Good defense by Westbrook. She doesn't need the shot fake. She's got Avina Westbrook on her down yeah. low. Just turn around and shoot right over the top of her. Smith about three inches or so taller than Westbrook. Ten seconds to shoot for the Knights. Going back to the hot hand. Contact. That was good execution underneath out of bounds. Understanding what you're trying to get. And now Lee Edwards, pardon me, is fouled out. They can bring in 6'5", Dorka Juhas, with both Edwards and Nelson Adota fouling out. No one has fouled out yet for UCF, but they have three players with four fouls. Sports Center coming up next with Zubin Mahenzi and Kevin Connors. They'll take a look at the women's Sweet 16, LeBron and Cleveland, and Matt Ryan has been traded to Indianapolis from Atlanta. Sports Center right here on ESPN and the ESPN app when we are finished in stores. And gosh, Brittany Smith, a 76% free throw shooter on the season, one of four from the line tonight. And UCF as a team, 6 of 15. Again, when you're a team that struggles, you've got to take advantage when you get opportunities, and the foul line is an easy one. And usually they shoot 71% as a team. If they're around that, it would be a different story tonight. Williams can't convert. Under two. Battles. Juhas lurking. Wow, nice effort by Kaba, but the ball wouldn't stay home. That was a heck of a move by Kaba. Couldn't get it to go down. That would have cut it to a three-point ball game. Instead, UConn up five, takes a timeout. We will take one as well. Huskies up five in stores. About 39 left to go in the fourth quarter as you take a look at the reset. Possession arrow in favor of Connecticut. UCF one foul to give and both teams with a couple of timeouts. Sweet 16 in Bridgeport awaits the winner. UCF though on a nice run, 7-0. Yeah, getting the ball inside to Brittany Smith. She got going a little bit in this quarter and Tay Sanders knocking down a three. If you think about opportunities right here, if you're UCF, get some buckets, get some scores, get some confidence and some energy. But right now, you know Ju yeah, UConn and Gino Oriema threw something up out of this timeout. Once execution, you have to be able to defend without fouling. This is where UCF has had some problems. This four guard offense, all spread because they come after you. They get aggressive. That leaves a lot of open space. Beckers has to shoot. Missed everything. Well, a minute 17 left now for UCF. Yeah, really good defensive play by UCF right there. Connecticut is shooting 30% for this game, and they're winning. This is the UCF effect right here. It's what you do. It's what they do. And Connecticut's able to find ways to put points on the board. Second in the nation in field goal percentage defense. First in the nation in scoring defense. The Knights, a minute to go. Hud. Called for the foul on Battles. Well, you're seeing Brittany Smith and... Avina Westbrook, right? And they're not going in there. Yeah, it's oftentimes, it's tough if they're not going to guard Masani Kaba up on the perimeter. You have to find ways to get her a little bit off the move or sometimes quickly enough that the defense can't get set. But I also like the ball in Diamond Battle's hands. She has been a good decision maker for this team throughout the course of her career and has been a big shot maker this season. The captain is a senior, but will be coming back next year. Again, the player of the year and the 
Defensive Player of the Year in the American. And Coach Abe said getting those awards up for confidence gave her a little bit of a swagger. Two badly needed free throws. UConn takes a timeout. It's a one possession game. Winner goes home, or the winner goes to Bridgeport, which is sort of home for UConn. <laughs> it's true. The loser goes home for sure. What a game this has been. UConn trailed 18 to 12 after the first quarter. And boy, Princeton, what a year for the Tigers. Almost got Indiana. Sweet down, Indiana able to pull off that victory at home in this tournament. And, and right now, you know, Coach Abe talking to her team defensively. Got to make sure to stay disciplined. You've got to force UConn to hit a tough shot, a tough contested shot. And if you're UConn, I like the way they were spreading out on the offensive end of the floor. But I think you look to find those open spaces and cuts to the rim. And UCF on a 9-0 run has held UConn scoreless over the last four. It's big bucket time. Beckers inbounding. Juhas, Westbrook, Williams, and Fudd on the floor with Beckers. Beckers for three. In and out, but Juhas, huge offensive rebound blocked by Smith. What a defensive play by Brittany Smith. Are you kidding me? In foul trouble all game long. Stays disciplined, stays straight up, makes a big defensive play. And then that's your leadership right away. Diamond Battles calling the timeout. Now I'm sure they discussed it in the huddle. Paige Beckers gets a good look right here. Dorka Juhas, heck of a rebound. But look at Brittany Smith. Stays disciplined, Diamond Battles. Lish Lewis calling a timeout, understanding time and score. That's that leadership, that's that experience that UCF has. They knew exactly what they wanted to do and got the timeout. Very heady play. UCF has never been to the Sweet 16. They've never won an NCAA game until they beat Florida in the first round. UConn going for a record 28th straight Sweet 16. And they're in the penalty. I think they go for a quick score, get aggressive to the rim, maybe get to the foul line. Hey, Lewis. Now on the switch. Gets it underneath. Defense, no, a foul. Becker's looking for the tie-up, but a personal foul has been called. This is a really good pass right here, and I thought at first look, I thought Paige Becker's got all ball, but we can see on the replay that she got some arm too. Hey, you see that look right there? That's the same look Diamond Battles has out there on the floor. at the free throw line. It's been called a lane violation on the Knights. The Huskies take a timeout. It looks like the official saying that she stepped over the line from his call with his hands, but I'm not sure. She shot faked on the free throw. Double clutched. Everybody went in the lane, so yeah. I wasn't quite sure what was being called. I did not see her foot go over the line. But the free throw line has been unkind and vice versa to UCF tonight. They are 8 of 18 from the free throw line, 44%.
Lewis fouls Juhas right away. And now she has fouled out. Couple of threes tonight for Lewis. And both coaches will take advantage of the 30 seconds they get for the sub to get a quick instructions. Yeah, well you can tell right now that Coach Abe is talking to them about who they want to foul. And right now you want to foul Kristen Williams. She's 67% free throw shooter. Everybody else on the floor pretty darn good. Juhas at 60% also on the floor now for UConn. And Williams, the one you just referenced. She is three of four from the line tonight, however. We rebound timeout, Coach Abe. And Kristen Williams might have just salted this one away at the line. They have made their last six free throws as a team. UCF struggling from there tonight. One of the major stories for this game. It sure is. The foul trouble, the struggles from the free throw line. Connecticut 16 of 21 from the foul line. It certainly has been a good source of offense and just what you'd expect from your senior leader and Kristen Williams to step up and knock those down. UCF has hit more field goals Two more field goals in UConn. Shooting better from the floor. UConn now shooting 29%. UConn has not had a field goal in four and a half minutes. They've doubled up UCF on the foul line. And UCF has given away 20 possessions off of turnovers. And when you struggle to score the basketball, you need to give yourself every opportunity you can to put the ball in the hole. Coming up, the Sweet 16 on Saturday. Indiana plays the winner of this game in Bridgeport. And there's the reset. Possession arrow in favor of the Knights. Nobody has any timeouts or fouls to give. Notre Dame and NC State play in the other game in the Sweet 16 in Bridgeport. That'll go fast, right? Yeah, you do. Probably not even looking at the basket. And an offensive foul? Nope. A defensive foul called on Kristen Williams. And right here, Brittany Smith trying to set a screen and if it's going to be called like it's been called all the game her feet were wider than her hips it's an illegal screen but UCF getting that call and Brittany Smith knocking down the free throws three point game Hud is fouled 89% on the season. Two for two tonight for the freshman. There's your mom. doing what us moms do. That's right. So I'm going to take a picture of my kid getting 
getting us closer to the Sweet 16. Kaba. And Beckers exhorting again the sold out crowd to go from loud to louder to loudest. The Yukon Huskies for the 20. Eighth straight year are heading to the Sweet 16. Hey, it was a dog fight, but UConn doing what they do to find a way to get the victory. And what an effort by the Knights of UCF. They hit their free throws at their season average. It's a different outcome. Gina Oriama knew that this was going to be a tough one, and indeed it was. It was, but these growing moments, these opportunities to find ways to survive, to find ways to advance, this has been an uncharacteristic up and down season for UConn. But they're going to the Sweet 16. Indeed they are. 16 for Bud to lead the way for the Huskies. For Stephanie White, I'm Pam Moore. The rest of our crew coming up next, Sports Center. The Sweet 16 starts Friday as we say so long from stores.